Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our last session of the last day. We have, the day. I know, we have Melissa Belgard, the most amazing Savage user. She is here to answer all of our problems and woes <laughs> and questions. And I'm just totally putting it on you. And no, really, hopefully she will be able to teach us a few things because that's one program that we, since we don't have students, we can't really see. Yep. So we, um, we definitely need the PD. Um, but she is a amazing teacher at Denham Junior High. And is there anything you want to share with us? Me? Yeah. You want me Before to we get me? started? Yeah. No. You, Melissa, what do you want to say? I want to say I'm going to eat a big bag of chips after this. Yes. I'm doing I'm going to go home and take me a big nap. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> like, that's like my favorite summertime activity is a nap. So. Absolutely. All you right. got to well, do what makes you happy. We're going to pull that prescription y'all we're gonna pull up the presentation and we're gonna pop off and let you take it look at this cute little waving thing all right i'm already sold all right melissa <laughs> take it away well the cute little wavy thing is something around remove bg which is just a website but um there's some steps that will you have to add to that but because I did that last summer, I don't exactly remember all the steps. That was what we were talking about right before this. But I can get that information to you. Not a problem. You can start with Remove BG, take a picture on your phone, drag and drop it into the website, and then um, it removes the background of any picture that you put there. So that's just a great place to start. And then the, the action part is one more step that I'll get back to you with. But for today, so we're going to look at the Navigating Savas. And one way I like to do trainings like this is, two big ideas. We're going to provide clarity and we're going to build some confidence. So specifically around navigating Savas, we're going to look at, um, well, that's me. We'll come back to that. You guys go ahead and log in if you're on to Savas, okay? Because there's a million steps to that. Let me tell you our agenda. I'll go back and tell you more about who I am. So we're going to clarify navigation of Savas. We're going to look at some playlists and we're going to look at some specific places to find resources. And then I'm going to build some confidence by looking at some classwork, like products, where they're going to show up for your students, where they're going to show up for you to grade them, um, and how to do some student groups. And then we're going to look at some data reports. We're going to jam all of those things in. So then I will move back to who I am. I've been teaching for a while in a lot of different places and um, do some Google and apps for uh, certification for Apple because I'm an Apple user to Apple. I love Mac books. So um, I know that our district works in a lot of other places, but that's my preference. And then that's my family and that's my classroom and that's where we are today. And so jump back over and make sure that you're in Savas and there's a million of those little computer windows there on purpose because Savas, although um, you get more familiar with it, the more that you use it, it's actually kind of difficult to navigate through because they didn't follow the Amazon click count that click once and buy it. You have to click several times just to log in as well as to get into the curriculum section where your, where your content is actually housed for unit one, unit two, et cetera, as well as your assessments for each of those. So we're going to take a look specifically at that, um, particularly just throw a few things at our new teachers. If you guys are on today or watching this um, later this summer, you will need to know where a few things are once you log in. You're going to use your Power School, um, Power Teacher, excuse me, Power Teacher login for this information. And then you'll go through a couple of other steps to get to the screen that you see right here. So, one thing that you're going to need to know is there's the question mark. So, new teachers or current teachers, the question mark is literally something that you choose. You can type in a response, you can type in a word, you can type in data, you can type in point of view. I mean, uh, you can type in data, you can type in uh, student groups, things like that, and they will give you some information there straight from their program, and it's clickable. So you can click into it and then pull up a new screen there for you. So if you're in a, in a place where you can't find to, how to do something quickly, that's the question mark that you would want to go and look at, and it brings up some different topics. And then if you, um, just to look at an overview of our curriculum, there are, th there are some major portions of our curriculum. Every unit has three main pieces. Those three main pieces are whole group instruction, small group instruction, and independent task. 
And then there's some writing that goes into that. There's two performance tasks is what they're labeled as. So in your whole group instruction, that's usually what you would start with first. And there's several texts there that you would literally do as an entire class with the activities that are there. There's vocabulary, there's grammar, there are um, skills that go along with each of the texts that are housed within the unit. And then you would move into small groups where you would have them working in groups, um, whichever choice you decide, two, four, six, however your groups are in your classroom. And then the, there's another set of texts with a similar set of questions and vocabulary and conventions and grammar, et cetera. And then you would have an option to do an independent task. Savash so usually gives, uh, tells you to choose something, like the students can make a choice on which text they want to use. But I've used them in different ways in our classroom, and I know other teachers around the parish will also do a few different things with those independent tasks. Um, you can use them coupled with the selection test that Savas provides in the unit, and that independent reading passage can also have an assessment piece. You might be able to use that as a weekly assessment, or you could just use it to assess their independent work, et cetera. But all of those pieces are housed in their online portal that you're seeing on the screen, as well as a workbook. Our parish gets a workbook version of this. So tips and tricks. We take out the unit one, say, at one unit at a time. We'll rip those pages out and they put them in their binder. That way, if anything, it goes home and they can't get online, they can also look in their workbook pages that they have in their binder. Some kids just also really prefer to write things on paper. So if you give them that option, sometimes they can, they can do it on the workbook pages that are in their binder or they can do it online. And I just have them write some notes when they turn things in, like my, my assignments online, my assignments on workbook. That might be too much to manage, that's fine. That's just what I choose to do with my students because I have some students that have some strong preferences usually that come in. And so we kind of work that out along the year. So whole group, small group, independent task, and then there's a performance task. There's one that comes after your whole group, and there's one that comes after your small group and independent task. And so those are writing prompts that are strict, strictly from Savas. We tend to make those slight changes on those to make them more leap aligned to align with what we do with Common Core and LEAP here in our parish, but we do write every unit. We write an entire PCR, if not pieces and parts of different uh, writing assignments throughout the unit so that they get those two pieces coupled together. So I just wanted to throw that out there for you. I'll be getting a resource to you that's going to show you some of the clicks that you would go through to get straight to the curriculum, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. And then also I'll offer myself to you guys if you have questions, if you have a need to just sit, you know, um, we can shoulder to shoulder, you can Zoom with me, whatever you are comfortable with so that we can um, work through this together if you'd like. So I'm usually available more along the lines in July, but just email me if you need that kind of assistance as well. That's not a problem. So let's look back at our um, first part. We're gonna provide some clarity on making a playlist and using some of the resources that are available to you. So playlist. Um, playlists are fun. I, I don't think that I've used them or utilized them as much as I should have, but I think that this is something that I will definitely incorporate, I have some friends in other schools that love playlists. And so as I went through our curriculum again in the last couple of weeks, I noticed how easy it is to navigate if you do put a playlist together. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that playlist. So if you're logged in, your screen will look like this. And then you're, once you log in, you can click here or up here for your curriculum. So you would click there, and then you would wait for everything to load. And then you're gonna scroll down. We're gonna bypass some of these other things. I'm gonna show you straight um, how to get into the curriculum, and then I'll show you where the playlists are housed. So you're gonna go to unit resources, It'll pull up all of your units. We're gonna go into unit one. I teach seventh grade, so all of my stuff is gonna be seventh grade, uh, directed at seventh grade curriculum today. And then once that loads, you have all of these pieces and parts. And I'm not gonna go through all these pieces and parts. We're gonna go straight to where the curriculum is and then straight to how to make a playlist. So once you go into your curriculum, let's say we wanna do a unit one introduction, and we want that information to be delivered to our students. 
then once you click into unit one introduction, you see these add to playlist options. So you literally just click add to playlist and then you can house this in unit one intro, already have a unit one playlist created and this is actually already in my unit one playlist. So I'm gonna name this um, training unit and then create. Create my playlist. And so I will be adding things to this playlist. So my new playlist is called training unit and this is the only thing that's there. And then when I want to locate this information, I'm gonna go back to the home screen. So anything I put in that playlist, I can go straight to my library now. I can go to my training unit and there's the information that I will put into that unit. It will all be listed here. So let me show you what my unit one looks like because I've already created a playlist called unit one. Okay, so I've added lots of things here. Just to give you an example, this would be your easiest way to navigate straight to unit one after you've done the work of setting up the playlist. So I've got my CSA there. I've got my weekly assessments there. I've got one of our texts there, along with audio summary, two kinds, was, is the whole group text, vocabulary, word study, craft and structure items, so and convention. So all of those pieces I could lump together now and assign. Now, you may not want to assign everything in one day, and that's fine. So maybe you just want to do the text itself with the activities that come along with the text, maybe even the audio summary, because I'll show you in a minute, that's Spanish and English. And then maybe you just want to give them um, those two things. And so I'm going to hit these three dots and I'm going to hit assign. And then it brings me straight to the assignment. So I always change this to the items that I would want it to say. So maybe I say Monday, 9, 17, two kinds, message. So while you're doing that, I do have a question. Um, once you create this playlist, can you share this with another teacher? You cannot share playlists. Um, okay. Because as, as a teacher, you cannot share the playlist. As an administrator of, of this program, like above us, um, I know that Ms. Montleon, she will share our CSAs with us. But mm -hmm. we can share any assessment that we create. We cannot share with other teachers on our campus. Gotcha. Okay. So they would have to go in and create their own playlists. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So this is basically setting up the assignment, which you may already be familiar with. You just type in your uh, uh, students that you want to submit this assignment to. I'm going to already have my students set up in Google Classroom. So I'm going to choose that Google Classroom assignment and I put the date on there and then I'm going to hit assign. So that's assigning something straight from my playlist. And you can assign as many of these things as you want. You can move these things around into whichever order you want as well. And so this is just several of the unit uh, one options. So let me go back to our unit one one more time and I'll show you what that playlist information looks like. So you just go home. And again, I told you this, there's like lots of clicks. So in order to get back to the curriculum, I still have to go through all of those places to go back to unit one. So I'll scroll, scroll down, unit resources, unit one. Go back to generations, that's our unit one. And then pull up all of those pieces again. So the playlist just allows me to go straight to that unit one if I've front loaded all of these things that I want in my unit one to my unit one playlist. Now you could do this, like here's this button right here. Any, anywhere it says add to playlist, you can definitely just add it into whichever list you're wanting to create. So you have some options. I did an entire unit. You could just do a, a playlist for just the text that you wanna work on. You could name it two kinds. You could do a playlist for just things that are um, skill-based. I want all of my point of view stuff in a, in a folder. I want all of my characterization items in a folder, all grammar, whatever it is. So you can name, you can create these playlists and you can name these play, playlists however you would like. Skills, units, etc. Um, it just really depends on how you want things set up for you and how easy you, 
easily you want to access them. So playlists take a little front end work, but they can be very beneficial for you to quickly get to the information that you're looking for. Um, and then with that said, you can actually add in to our curriculum portal. If you go to my library and you have a playlist created, you can add things to that playlist. You can also just add things to your curriculum. So this is not something that I've done in the past. This is something I've worked on this summer. So I'm going to go to my playlist, but you can also just go right here to the left where it says upload a file or add a link and you can upload any of your files and you can add any links that you would like to add. I'm just gonna show you where they show up on the playlist. So you can go to your playlist. And then I'm gonna scroll all the way down to show you what that can look like. So right here, the elevator is a text that we use in addition to, to add in to our curriculum. So when I click there, I'll show you that it's turned my elevator passage into a PDF. And now I can assign it directly to the students from Savas. Again, I just wanted to show you what that looks like because it could be easier for you to directly do this from Google Classroom into your Google Classroom. But if you wanted to use this program the way that it was designed, you can also add things in just like that text. So I would add that in. You can also add in links and I'll scroll back down to show you what that looks like. These are links. I'm going to show you what these look like and then we're going to talk about where these things came from in just a minute. So I upload, I clicked add a link and it added it to my playlist and this is going to open in a new window because it's an outside link. And so this is something that my perspectives offers. This is actually going to fall into our conversation when we talk about resources. But every unit has some resources under the current events tab um, that I can give you a little more information about. But that link went directly here. So it would take your students directly to the place that you linked it. This particular link is just showing teachers where this information is. But if you go to, let's see, where did that go? Let me go back a little. I'm going to show you the the student link would look like this. So this one's called Remembering John Lewis. And the student, if you assigned that link through Savas, it would show up like this. And they would be able to listen to this NPR five minute informational um, assignment. You could, you could give them a question or et cetera um, in the directions for them to answer. But that's some other options that you have, which would really be under our resource um, information. So playlist, units, skills, you can add your own, and you can also edit assessments. So I'm going to go back to my library and show you. This is also where our CSAs come. They come to us shared from the district. So you click on shared with me, and then there are the assessments that would be used for your uh, units and your beginning, middle, and end of the year assessments. And you would click there and assign your students that way. But under my content, that's anything that you change. So all of these selection tests, and I'll show you where those are located in just a moment, can, are, are used on a weekly assessment. They can be used as part of your daily assessment, however you plan to use them. But you can edit these and take off questions that you may not want to show up. So um, this, this set of questions is 19. I may only want them to have 10 questions. So when I edit this weekly assessment and make it my own, it shows up in my content rather than the assessment section, um, which is under resources. So let me pause and do we have any questions on playlists? So far, so good. You've answered the one about sharing with other teachers. Okay. Um, so you're good. Keep on trucking. Okay. So I'm going to go back to. Um, I had one little question. Sorry, me personally. Yeah. So the listen wise that you went to, that was sort of like a little five minute or whatever. Is that something that's connected with Savas or is that, uh, is that the podcast thing? I'm yeah, trying to remember. Mm -hmm. It's under current events. I'm going to show you specifically where to get that. Okay. Reason. 
because I had to go search and find that resource because I remembered it from training, but I honestly mm -hmm. hadn't used it. And so a okay. friend mentioned it to me and she was like, make sure you do this. And I was like, I got to go find where that is because it's actually kind of hard to find if you don't know where to look. So, so it is, but it's built into the Sabbath. It okay. Is. Mm -hmm. There's awesome. Um, I'll just wait for you to, when you get there. It's good. All right. Thank you. I'm going to give you a couple of places where resources can be found that are kind of hard to find. So the, let's make sure we did all of those things and clarify the navigation. Let's go home here. Um, just one more time, the browse information, this comes straight from our district. Our, our parish gives us access to these two locations. We're going to work in this one in a little bit. Classes, if you connect your classes to Google Classroom, will show up here where they have assignments that are due. That's also a place where the students can see some things that are due. And then data, we're going to talk about after we talk about resources. So those are our three like main sections of the online portal. And then when we look at, let's see, where are we? Resources, where are they? So that's the that's the, the tricky part, right, is where are these resources? So when we look in our curriculum, actually under resources, that's a section that you can go and find things listed. It's not my favorite place to look for things. I like to look at things that are within the unit set up my activities for my unit and then go in and add resources because this can be a little bit cumbersome as well. So you can search for things by skill. Like I want to, I want to find conflict items, but I don't want conflict items from all the grade levels. I just want conflict items from grade seven. So that's one of the filters that you can choose. Um, and then you can look at the other options down here that those are going to be things that you're going to need to play around with. Mostly you want to look for your grade level. And so filtering your grade level is going to give you the best information at first. When you look through this list, this is going to list every single item within our curriculum that uses conflict in its discussion or on the page. So let me show you what that looks like. If I click here, it is going to pull up a, an activity or a, um, an assignment on conflict. But this particular conflict assignment is specifically addressing what happened in the text, The Last Dog. Well, if I'm not reading The Last Dog, I don't want to use this assignment. And it doesn't label it that way in the page before. It just says, analyze craft and structure conflict and resolution. So that's why I always like to start within my unit. Because within my unit, it'll have analyze craft and structure conflict and resolution underneath the last dog when I'm working through last dog. So it pairs them well, but there's no way to really filter that successfully in the resource tab. So just be careful when you're searching for things that way. On the back end, like on, really on the flip side of that, um, there can be things that show up for resources that you may not have in your unit. But the place that that really shows up is actually not in my perspectives ELA grade seven, it actually shows up best in My Perspectives Plus. So when you click on My Perspectives Plus, we're still going to be looking for conflict just to show you what it looks like. It's going to show you a table of contents with lots of options. The ones that I use most here are going to be conventions and I've used some of the standards practice. The rest of these items are good additions for your um, activities that you're already doing within the unit, but but it really is pretty excessive. So you, do, you may or may not use that. The digital library can be really helpful, um, but you need to be know, you need to know what you're kind of looking for because in this digital library, it's going to be online text that are available. But a lot of them are um, geared towards high school. There's a few of them geared towards middle school. So it just depends on what you're looking for. But that's if you have a student that needs access to something and would like to read it, then there are um, options for them to read, like The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, et cetera. And it's just in alphabetical order. Um, but those are online texts that are there. And there's lots, lots of text there. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push back to the resource section. We're going to search for conflict like we talked about. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to actually go to resources. We're going to type in conflict. This time when we type in conflict, you're not going to be pulling things from the units. 
you're going to be pulling additional pieces of information or skills or videos, etc. So when we talked about playlists earlier, and I can also filter this to seventh grade. These are some of the options that I could uh, like add in to our assignments on conflict. So I can simply just add to my playlist here, just like we did before, drop down, find my training unit, add it. It's going to immediately put it in that playlist right here. And so when I click on conflict, it's going to pull up our assignment. Now this one you'll notice doesn't have a specific text connected to it. So this is an actual addition to um, the skill of conflict that you might find in your unit. So this one you could use in any places. Now, there was a question that had come up about how do I make this assignment that is a download, it's going to download to a Word document. How do I deliver that the best way to my students? Um, we do two things. You can literally just download it and connect it to your Google Classroom to one of your other assignments. They can answer it on the um, Word document. They can use Kami or they can... Um, one other option that we use is I will just simply snapshot that and I will put it on a slide in our weekly activities. I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit when we get down to the student views. Um, so there's a couple of options that you have there. The best thing that works for our students is if I, I work on a slide set every day with them so they, they know all of their stuff is right there. Bell ringers, vocabulary, um, instructions for them to do certain things certain ways. Um, so I would literally just put that snipped onto that slide and I would put a table next to it so that they can answer it. That seems to be the best way they don't have to worry about adding it back in. But it is a really good skill for your students to know how to find a document on their drive, make a copy, like if they click and it says make a copy, they say yes, and they go and they can add that assignment back into their Google Classroom. So if you have a chance to teach them that, that's a really good skill. At this point, some of your students may be coming to you with those skills already. So it just kind of depends on how things are happening on your campus. But that's how you would add in resources from that additional um, location, just simply putting those onto your playlist. So in order to get back there, unfortunately, we have to go all the way back to this page and all the way back into um, the, the place where we were. So when, I, when the navigating part comes into play, it can be really cumbersome, just like we had mentioned. So I am gonna go all the way back to conflict and show you what some of these other things look like because there are videos, there are some interactive tools, um, and that's still in the right vein. So this conflict video, when you click on it, it is an actual video. So you could assign that to them directly and it could show up in their Google Classroom. And so when you play, I won't play it, but obviously it's gonna be a video that they would play, and then they're gonna check it and mark it as complete. And so that looks a little bit different on a teacher view versus student view, which I'm gonna show you what a student view looks like as well. So anytime you wanna look for a skill, that's the best way to kind of use this resource. And it just has lots of different places where you can um, find some extra information on a particular skill. You can also look up things like adverbs. And it'll give you additional options here, grammar tutorials, etc. But if you just want to look into um, grammar on your table of contents, oops, in your table of contents, there's a section there that talks just about conventions. And so that's where all of the grammar, additional grammar pieces are house. So you can just click on conventions and it's going to be an alphabetical list of items. I check my time. So um, these are definitely good if you are looking for some things. We do these kind of on like a Friday after their assessments. There's video tutorials, there's grammar worksheets, there's even Spanish grammar worksheets, which I found were really helpful if you have a student that needs that extra assistance. It gives them some confidence to know that they can look at it in both the English and the Spanish to figure out how to do it and then maybe apply that a little bit differently and a little bit better uh, in the English uh, when they get back to the regular worksheet. But those are also digital worksheets as well. So on these, you can, let me see, let's just do nouns, noun clauses. 
this is a little bit different than um, than what what the videos are in the worksheets. This is more interactive. The students can click through every single piece. So there's three parts to show it, there's three parts to try it, and there's three parts to apply it. Um, and so they would have directions on each one of these if they click through, and then they would have to go to part two and look at that information along with the rest of the information there. And part three is also information. What they do normally is they just breeze through this then they go to try it, which is where all of their answers are going to be housed. And they start to try to, you know, click through things. But it records their answers and it gives them a little score. So there's three parts here. And then there's also an apply it. And there are three parts there where they have to. Hey, Melissa, we had a question come in on Messenger and someone wanted to know how you're taking this and you're working it into your classroom. So I think it's I think she's a new teacher. She knows that she's supposed to use this. How, is, how does she incorporate it along with all the other stuff? How do you do that? Well, I, okay, so Google Classroom is where I push everything to the students. They know they come in, they log in, they go straight to their Google Classroom, and they open up their activity slides. And on that activity slide, it looks just like my board. It's going to be their agenda, and then it's going to have some – let me just show you. Okay. I have a um, – uh, let's see, where is it? Oh, I don't mean to make you skip forward if you're going to no, get to no, it. It's fine. it's fine. So this is what they see. And then that's also on my board. Okay. And then they're just going to go straight through. Like here's their vocabulary. That concept vocabulary comes straight from the reading that they're going to do that week. And we give them a vocabulary test at the end of the week as well. And so we look at vocabulary every single day. And then um, this is an example of that worksheet that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. I don't like to put all of the text boxes. I like to just pull in a table over here to the side and and number it the same as their answers here, and they just type oh in their gosh. answers. That's so much easier than trying to put. I would, well, I don't think of these things. I love that. That's well, it didn't happen until you know two months in when we're like, this is crazy. <laughs> how can this be better? So that's I just snip those worksheets, and this is how nice. they would do their practice on that skill. So they might have had an Ed puzzle before this. In fact, I think there's an Ed puzzle. Here. Yeah, I saw one. So there's an Ed puzzle here, and then there's an activity on conflict here um, that they would have to add into their stuff. So I everything I deliver to them is in this slide set, and so it can be pulled easily from Savas. Okay. Okay. Just, just by snipping it and placing it in there, and then if they have things like this where it'll say, "Go to your Google Classroom." click on the introduction launch text. That's gonna take them directly to Savas. And that okay. looks like this. So this was part of what I was gonna talk through. We're just, we'll go through it a little bit earlier. Okay. So when they go to, I need to find something that is there on Savas. Let's see, that, that's for sure on Savas is what I meant. <laughs> um, because the last unit that we did was a, a novel unit. The assignment I was looking for. Silent Spring. Okay. So Silent Spring was, I just want to show you what that Savas stuff looks like. Where is it? So when you assign something to, from Savas to your Google Classroom, it's going to show up like this. Savas doesn't allow you to do anything with this except this right here if you're going to assign the Google Classroom. Now you can go into each of your classes and you can edit this and add in other things. So if you wanted only one assignment with the passage here and the questions, etc., because all of the activities are in this as well um, when they click here, then that's that's what it looks like in Google Classroom. So my students would go to their set, their activity slides, figure out what they're doing for the day. And then each of those things are housed on Google Classroom. And I like to do it individually because yeah. it's like a checklist for them. Mm -hmm. We started the year doing everything on one assignment and they just didn't do it. Like they didn't know. Yeah, where. I, we've had the same issue. Yeah. So even though it was all there, they didn't know what order to do things, mm -hmm. even though it was listed there in the directions. So I just trained them to always go to the activity slides first view what's there and even put an ed puzzle there that day um, and then they would go back and find their their assignment here for their passage 
So I think I can log in as one of my students because I have spoke with their parent and they allowed me to do that. Oh, that's awesome. I'll show you what it looks like as a student, which was which was one of the things that we were going to do. We're build confidence on how does this look for our students, right? So where do I find those resources and how does it look? And if, if we have time, I'll go back and show you where that um, current event, I know Heather had asked about the current event resource. Okay. Is. But this is what the students go to. When you assign things through Google Classroom, from Savas through Google Classroom, when they click on that assignment, it takes them straight to it. They don't even have to log in. They just have to click just like I did on their Gmail, I mean, on their Google login stuff, and it mm -hmm. takes them straight to the assignment. Nice. That's been really, really easy for the students. They don't log in any other way to our platform right now. So when the student goes here, they will, they will see what I've assigned to them. And if you assign, if you check the boxes that are on that playlist together or in the curriculum, just normally, it doesn't have to be on the playlist. Then it's going to show them up, show up here like a step one, step two. So I just added in their audio summary. That's their step two. But this is their passage. This is their curriculum passage. This is, I think, unit three or four. Okay. And their passage is here. They can listen to it. They can highlight it. They can use all their online tools. And then when they start to click through making meaning, this is where you may have them do additional things. Okay. Comprehension check questions. She wrote her answer in. It gives a time stamp and a date. Nice. You can go back and edit it. So the student will write here. The teacher can also see that information and give a grade. So you have all any of these little click down items are activities or questions or um ways to annotate their close reading assignments that are in their workbook are also online here and it'll tell them highlight this mark this underline this and then they okay. can um, analyze craft and structure we've talked about a little bit just because of the skill so this was a persuasive speech so these are the skills that are going to be looked at in this passage and the activities are going to be geared around that so this wow. one in particular is a is a chart so they would click on the chart and I don't think I asked them to do the chart. Oh, yes, I did. So they would exam write the example down and the information here. That's the student's work. Like That's the, great. A couple of these awesome. are, you know, the book and then they would write their own information in. And so they just click right in and write their response. Students who like computers don't mind doing that. Mm -hmm. My students who want to write on the paper, they, they answer all of this in their workbook. Because it's okay. all they, all of this is there. Do you so, give them the choice? They can do either or. I do, I do. And if they've done it on on their workbook, they'll just let me know, and I can go in and check it. Like as they're working on something else, I'll say, you know, just have your work, your work open, and I'll just kind of. And really, honestly, when they're working on this anyway, I'm kind of rotating around the room, so I know what they've done and what they haven't done. Yeah. And then if they're online, they'll just send me a message. Hey, I, I did all my stuff online today. Awesome. You kind of know. I mean, they either have their laptop out or their yeah. Mm -hmm. But if they're doing something and I'm not there and I need to go back and check this, I can see this information. And so you, once they finish, because I don't ask them to do every single thing here. We might do this two days. Well, Al Gore was really long. We did it for like three days. Um, but they they can work on certain parts of this on certain days. Okay. And that so makes sense. then they can mark as complete. And it actually flags in the program that it's complete. And then there's also the on audio summary. And there's an English and Spanish version here. Um, there's also English and Spanish versions of like parent letters about the unit that you're doing and all sorts of things. That, oh, that that's great. You can just add that in. I always just add in the summary just as an extra piece. Sometimes mm -hmm. they need it. My, my ESL students and, and kids that just really need that extra support, they'll listen to it in Spanish and then they'll read it. Oh, that's good. I always wonder if they actually use it, if it's there. So that's good. It's there. And it, sometimes you have to kind of coach them and encourage them, but they do. So that this gives them a place to like check off things. Like I did that and mm -hmm. I did this other thing. And so it, it will mark things complete for them. They like that, like for things to be complete. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what a student sees. Okay. What that looks like for a teacher is different and going to take a few minutes to log out of all of this but i would like to show you what i can see um as a teacher so that you can grade it Let's see i'm gonna have to log out of presley stuff
So that hopefully is really helpful for that. I love that you show because we got so many questions about it that I can't answer. And this is this is awesome. I love seeing it from the student side because we don't always get that option. Right. So let me quickly show you where to find this information. And I'll remember it takes a million clicks to, to log in. So <laughs> of course they um, the the teacher side, I'm going to want to grade what what Presley did. Now, I'm going to pull up a different assignment. Um, so it won't be that same Al Gore assignment, but I was going to pull up the assignment I had planned to pull up to show you. And that's also kind of works in with our data piece that's at the bottom. So we can just throw that in there too. So when I go to that class and to her class. See, I know that they did. All right, let's do this. One. So over here, when I click on this assignment for their class, it shows me how many students come like officially hit the complete button, how many people are working, how many people didn't start, etc. And then I can click on this score button. And when I click on the score button, I'm going to go into the students work. And I'm going to be able to see what they did, I can make a comment, I can give a grade, etc. And all of that goes straight to Google Classroom, it syncs automatically. Nice. And then if you want to take that score and put it in your grade book, then I always just use the grade uh, grade uh, transfer and transfer that over. So all of this, all of their selection tests, all of their assessments, end of the year, beginning of the year, all of that, if you do, if you take Savas and you assign it through Google Classroom, it's going to be really easy to transfer your grades over for that one assignment if you're using something like grade transfer because it's all there. Um, you don't have to go back into this program unless you're manually grading something. So none of these you can see have an overall score. Um, let me go find my student that I have permission to see. So here is her information and it says that it's in progress. So I can review it and then it'll pull up what she's typed in her. Okay, so they don't have to hit the complete button for you to see what's going on. No, I can see it. Nice. I can see it. So then um, it's really slow today. That's so, part of it. That's perfectly it normal. <laughs> so then when when you see this, and I like to hide this because I can see more of the screen. Okay. Um, you can do making meaning where we were earlier and I showed you that information and um, anything that they've graded, you can see. Now you can see that they, this, they didn't do that assignment. In fact, I don't know that they did it at all actually, but I just wanted to show you where a student work can be seen. That's if you are looking at that information and wanting to see it on the back end. But if you're wanting to like score it, that's just how to see it. Like okay. if they're working on something. Um, if they've hit the complete button or the submit button, then I can score it in this program. Now, obviously, if they didn't do it, you can just put a zero in your grade book. But mm -hmm. um, they didn't, I think, so now this one you can see is completed and I've got options. So when I choose review and score, that's where I'm going to see a place to give a score right here. You see, I don't actually like to, that, that's one way that you can do it. I don't like to look at it that way. There's a, there's a different view that you can see and it's if you click show activities instead. So you can go in and put a score there, but you have to do a lot of clicking mm -hmm. through to do that. Oh yeah, the less clicks, the better for sure. Right, so let me, oh, it's gonna just push me back all the way. This is, these are the things that I get frustrated with. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm gonna go back and look at his assignment like this and, and hit show activities. And when I hit show activities, I can review his notebook entries this way. Uh, okay. And it should pull it up a little bit. Yes, like this. So I can see all of their assignments. He did his on paper. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have information here. Okay. 
So um, you, anything that they've completed would be typed here. And then you can go back and give them a score. So you can also do like this and go to the next student and you, you'll see their stuff as well, okay? So he's got stuff here. Even a smile can make someone's day and he's got mm -hmm. the time, date and stamp, et cetera. So that's a really helpful place just to know where student work is and how you can look at it from the back end. Um, so that kind of covers what a student sees where a teacher can can log into these passages and questions that you've assigned from the curriculum and look at what they've done online. It really just depends on how you like to deliver content for your students. Because you can push all of this out to Google Classroom and then they can also just do it like we mentioned in that workbook. It might be easier for you to grade. It might be easier for the student to make sure that they know that what they've done. But you've always got students at home. So mm -hmm. you just have to kind of balance that out on how you want to handle grading this information. But okay. that's how you find it. That's where it is. Um, and the same thing with your assessments. So I do want to go ahead and look at the current events. We're going to bounce right back to resources where we were talking earlier. So I'm going to go to the front page under browse, nope, under home, and show you, well, that was where I was, wasn't it? That's it. When you go to resources here, we have talked about a few other things under resources, but there really is so much. Um, so slow. That's okay. It's so slow. Uh, this is where any of the assessments that you've made, any of the assessments that are there, any of the exercises, any of those interactive things can be found here. I'm actually going to go back to table of contents because that's where we need to find the teacher resources. There's a place on the right hand side of the, the program right here that says teacher resources. There's also a place that says create content. So earlier when I was in my playlist and I added my own document and I added a link, that's a place right here that can be found as well. Upload a file, add a link. Okay, but we want to specifically talk about teacher resources because this is a place that was kind of hidden and it really isn't. It's right there on the right. I just never looked to the right because mm -hmm. I was always looking to the left for my curriculum on the units and assessments. So down here, if you see this, you've got accessible level text. Those can be beneficial for students who have specific IEPs, but it doesn't give enough of the text all the time. So these are kind of tricky. You need to check those out. It's like a condensed version of the large whole group, small group, or independent text. Um, but just be careful with those. But this is the current events place. So if you click on current events, that's going to take us to that place where we looked at listen wise, where we opened up in this other tab and it showed all of our units for seventh grade and you click on the unit and it's going to give you all of these options for things that coincide with um, our unit topic so okay that's really cool so if i go read more it's going to show me what i had shown you earlier and then other related current events and it this is the place where it actually gives you a you can copy that link like I did and put it in my playlist. You can copy that link and put it straight into Google Classroom. You can copy that link and make a button on your slides, whatever you want them to do, however you want to deliver that to them, that's how they would get to it. Because this is an outside resource, but it's connected to Savas. So okay. They have some questions there. So um, this is something that I would like to use, utilize more often. I think it would be beneficial to the students to have some sort of current event connection there. It's not something we're doing currently, but we can look at it. Mm -hmm. So that is where that current event resource is housed. And we did talk about um, grammar, interactive tools for grammar. We do a lot of that stuff after our assessments on Fridays. I think I may have mentioned that. That's a good time when people finish things in different places um, that they can take a look at some practice, some extra practice on grammar. Um, and then we talked about our assignments. How do we get our documents from our curriculum? to something that's usable that they download as a student. Uh, you can do that as a teacher, you can snip it, you can have them using Kami if you have that tool, you can have them download it and add it back into their assignment, however you wanna handle that. Um, and then assessments. I wanna show you the assessments piece because 
I mentioned earlier that you can go to a selection test and you can take questions off that you don't want to use for your selection test. So unit one selection test is what I just clicked on. And then that's going to bring up all of the selection tests for unit one, including your independent tasks. So for instance, there's a print version and an online version. So we did everything online. I'm just going to hit customize. You can click this button and add every single assessment to your playlist. You can click certain ones and add them to your playlist. It just depends on what you want to do. So let's click on customize. It's going to create a new test and it's going to drop it into my content on that um, top of that list where it said options like browse and data. And then this is going to be a list of all of the questions on that test. You can label it whatever you want. You can um, save it there and then it saves it automatically. And then you can go in and look at standard driven. So every standard, I mean, every question has a standard, tells you what which question it's from, and then it gives you an example. So these are uh, comprehension first read questions. We like to take off certain questions that we may not cover in that particular text. So for instance, if I click on question 20 and question 20 is personal pronouns and proper pronouns. Well, maybe I didn't get to that this week and I wanna take that question off. So all I have to do is hit delete. And now my questions are 19 instead of 20. And you can move them around and you can add test items from other uh, places, but this is usually just adding questions from other texts. So maybe you read two texts, you just want a couple of questions from one and the other and you can combine them. But then all you have to do is hit done and you can see it. Preview is just gonna show you what it looks like, obviously. You can click on that uh, in your own time kind of take a look at what the student would see. But then when you hit done, it's going to automatically, like I had mentioned, drop it into my library. So once that loads, um, that's where you would find that selection test. And so that would, when we name them, I color code all of their assignments every day is a different color. And so I'm, red is their assessment day on Fridays usually. So here's my test. That's where you find the selection test that you edited. Um, and named. So for instance, under unit one in my playlist, I'm going to show you what those look like there too. I feel like it's getting slower as the day goes. So these are our assessments. We have a weekly, we have vocabulary. That means I took off all the questions except for the vocabulary questions for that test. Um, we, we did some other things throughout the year, but we started doing something like that. So when I click on this, that's going to show you what the students see this is exactly what they see. They can, it can read to them, they hit start, and then it walks through all the questions. One thing to note about assessments in Savas, notice that there are only questions, there are no passages listed with this. So you have to make sure that they have a copy of the passage if you want them to have access to the passage when they take this assessment. We usually always give them access to the passage because why not? They're gonna have it on the leap test anyway. So they're either going to look in their binder where we have that unit pulled out in their binder, they're going to look in that piece of the text, or you can assign the text online, just like we had shown you, had shown you earlier, and they can just click back to that text and find it. So most times they'll pair them together. I taught them how to put one screen and the other screen together, and so they'll have their passage open, and they'll have their questions that they can answer on their test and then hit submit. So those are, those are things that you learn along the way. Um, I think one of the first assessments we gave, we didn't have access. We had um, already ended the assignment for the passage and they started to take their assessment and they're like, can we use the passage? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And they're like, well, where is it? I'm like, yeah, that's a great question. Let's go find that. I have no idea. So I had to go back and open up their passage for them to see the test. So you just have to make sure you have a plan in place for things like that when that happens. And that a lot of that is just kind of happens along the way. So just give yourself some grace and the students will help you learn too. I, I think we're going to be really close on time, but there were student groups. There was a question about student groups. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, if you're using Google Classroom and Savash, you cannot use student groups. You can, however, assign things to your student group, to a group in Savas if you're working straight from Savas and not adding things to Google Classroom. So that looks under classes like this. We go to classes. You're going to need to click on these items down here mean that Google that's a Google class okay 
So these are my other classes that Savas created from my Power School roster. So if you go right here to student groups, you can actually click a few students and add them to a group and you can name them whatever you would like. Um, so that's really what student groups can, can do for you. Melissa, do you feel like student groups are a good investment of time to do? Okay. Not through Savas. I mean, you can student, yeah. you can group your students um, in Google Classroom. You can just assign certain groups, certain things. I think that in our, in our place where we're at with Google Classroom, I think that's probably more beneficial for your time. And that that's kind of the general consensus that I've been seeing. And um, that was my guess too. So I'm glad I'm glad you said that. Okay, good deal. The last thing I want to touch on is data, um, data reports. One thing to remember about your data reports, whenever the students take the test, you cannot see your class results or for the test as a whole in a report until you reach the close date. So if you test on a Friday and you have it open until Tuesday, you can view their assessment scores on Google Classroom because like I said, it automatically bumps those class scores all the way to Google Classroom. So you can use grade transfer and put all those students in that are there on Friday. But if you have two students who are absent, you're not gonna really be able to do anything with your data from Savas until that date closes, until that Monday or that Tuesday when that date closes. So for instance, this is already a closed assignment. These are some of the assessments they took from February to 30th, February to April. So this one, it tells you if you just scroll over it, what it is and when they took it. So you click on it and then it's gonna pull up a screen. It's gonna have all of your data there, okay? Now the thing about this is you can't really do any, this is great, it looks fun on the screen, but you can't do anything with it if you're manipulating data for some other uh, data transfer situation for your campus or your you know, department head or whatever. They want to know how many questions they missed. You can look at it digitally, but sometimes you need it to be able to send to someone. And so that's where the export data situation comes in. Now you can always you can sort these. Um, you can click on questions to see exactly how each student performed on each question, et cetera. You just can scroll down and, and see that information. But if you go to student analysis, it's going to say the student score. I guess this is safe to have out there. <laughs> and then you hit export data, export, and it's going to download into um, an Excel style program. Mine uses something different. Once it downloads, then when you open that up, then that's going to give you a report that you can do something with. Okay. So, I think I opened it several times, my bad. So this is a report that you would be able to actually do something with. No idea why that one always gets so large in the percentage category, but it does. So now you can sort this data till your little heart is content. You can color code this. I'm a huge color coder. So I would put all of these students in um, where their scores were, were uh, sorted in a way where I could do all of that data that we need to do every year. So I think that we are through all of the things that I had um, planned for the program. What are some other questions that we might have? I think, no, you've covered every single one that we've gotten um, and everyone that we've given you ahead of time. So rock on. That was awesome. I yeah. did not realize just how much stuff for lack of a better term is in this program i didn't either I'm, i guess i just thought it was for csas and that was it I, there's so much in there I mean, you don't have to create any of it and it's all aligned and right there and you just go yep i'm gonna do this 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 and that and i mean like you just have wow. to really get in there and play around with yeah. what's available in each unit for each text because it can get very very convoluted very cumbersome so some of those other places that we visited, like the resources in the My Perspectives Plus, that can that that can be really overwhelming if you're looking at this for the first time. Mm -hmm, um, very much so. It can um, be really beneficial if you know what to look for. So, yep. for those of you still watching, what we're going to do is we're going to timestamp this. So we're going to with all the different topics, we'll put timestamps. That way you don't have to rewatch the whole thing to get that information. So um, be looking for that. That'll happen in the next day or so. 
Melissa, this was amazing. Thank you yeah, so thank much. Thank you. Um, I think this is going to help no a lot of middle school teachers, especially newbies. Mm -hmm. Especially sure. yeah. um, beginning of the year. Shoot me an email. I'll help you out. <laughs> it can be really hard sometimes. To get yep, but she's got her email right there. You heard her. Shoot her an email. And I'm thinking, yep. I'm going to have to come sit with you and be like, all right, so show me how this show works. Show me. I know, right? This was so great. Um, yeah. All right. And this is our last one for the day. We are El Benito'd for day number two. Um, Make sure you fill out that survey. Yes, indeed. Tomorrow, uh, we pick up at 830 in the morning with Apple Classroom, followed by Seesaw for Beginners. And then we have a ton of new line panel trainings for you lower elementaries. We've got intermediate. We've got advanced. We have digital choice boards and Google Sites. So we've got a big day coming tomorrow. If you have any new line panels, be sure to tune in. And the beginning new line panel um, webinar or whatever we want to call it is actually a pre-recorded session. So don't think that we didn't do a beginner one. It is there, but it is underneath our pre-recorded ones. So if you want to get a head start and take a look yes. at that one before you do the intermediate and the advanced, go for it. Um, you can, again, you can always watch them in any order you want to, but we're super excited about that. And again, thank you so much, Melissa, for taking the time yep. and sharing your expertise with this. We really do appreciate it. Thank no you. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, y'all.